Welcome to Sitting Vessel Seeker. I'm Doug. That's Bart. We're here picking up stuff from the storage a lot. And this thing that looks like a rocket on the top, that is our ROV. I'm looking forward to getting back to that someday. But first, we gotta get to the ocean. Well, the solar panels will get washed off and so will the decks. I do believe you got it. He's doing good, Ginger. He is. He's doing good. I mean, no, that's actually good, man. Yeah, we just roll it back. You just finish off the last of it. And we'll okay. grind it all out. Yeah, the power plant's almost pretty at night. Okay, Brandon's here this morning. We're getting the ROV onto the boat this morning. The crimper is out. We got a little side job going on today. So we are putting in a new DC to DC converter because we got 24 volts that comes off our main batteries and we need 12 volts to run oh, a lot of other stuff on the boat. And unfortunately, our old DC to DC converters died, which is really weird because they've made multiple trips across the Atlantic in Greg Cotton's airplane. He used to deliver airplanes across the Atlantic solo, single engines. You think sailing is dangerous, try flying a single engine airplane across the Atlantic. So unfortunately they both went tits up on the way down here. So um, we're putting this one in. This is a hundred amp too. These weren't nearly that. Maybe we drew too much from them. And the lovely thing about this Victron piece is not only it's a hundred amp and a lot smaller, it's completely sealed. So salt water won't bother it. Awesome. Hear that? That's the sound of AIS and 12 volts surging through the system. There's more things to change here, but that'll be another day. One of the problems is I got my blowers to cool this room running off that DC to DC converter there. And that's maybe what killed the other ones because we ran them for a little while and that pulls a lot of load. So yeah, that may have gotten them. This is a hundred amp, it, it'll do fine, but I need to wire those in to the battery that starts the engine because that's when you're gonna be using them to cool this room because the main engine's on. So it makes sense to let the alternator do the job. Now that we've got 12 volt, we can run the crane. got here for the boat but I'm gonna to have to make some uh, smaller bolts and use some bushings to make them fit that'll be all right we can we can make it work and a lot of you have mentioned spreader bars and spreader bars is what we're gonna do so there'll be a bar that we put across from one side of the other and then hook right in the middle that'll let us lift the boat up a lot higher against the davits but that'll be something we do for transit when we're gonna move for a while these uh, rope hangers are a lot easier to work with and they don't uh, swing around and hit you in the head like a bar would. So they're good for when we're you know, in harbor like this or someplace where we're going to have the boat in and out a lot. be easier to do, but the spreaders, that'll work good. And then we'll put slings underneath them. I saw that done on whale boats too. They ran a, a sling kind of like, you know, here's the boat. They would run one sling across at a diagonal like this, another one like this. So even if a sling broke, one sling was enough to hold it. So you have one, two additional backups for keeping the boat up tight against the davits. I like that. Brandon and I got the yard bolted onto the forward sail. It's ready to go up onto the boat tomorrow. Isn't that a beautiful way to end the day? Okay, new hydraulic motor came in too, and that goes where this one is. And you can see the size of it means it has higher displacement. In other words, for every revolution of the motor, it needs more fluid. That means you get 
less speed but more power and that's what we need because this one would just barely pick up our anchor now it would do it now because see there's not many wraps on this because the more you stack on here like all of that chain going on here it's way out here and that gives the winch more leverage that it has to overcome it's all a balancing act and brandon's back this morning to do more slave labor i mean uh, health got to take those quick connectors off of there and we'll put them onto the new one Look, watch, Brandon's a skipper. Okay, Dave qualifies as a diesel mechanic because he just purchased a Peterbilt. Did you work on your dad's Peterbilts when you were a kid? Yep. Oh, awesome. And so we can set the idle on the pump? Yep. 615. That's all right. Show me where you adjust the idle again. It's on the back side, that little screw right there. Mm -hmm. Listen, at the bottom, I can adjust it up here. Good. Thank you. you don't need much though. I don't, it's, well, do you think it ought to not be six, what is it? I thought it was slower than that. Well, it started out when you first, when you first tested it, it was like lower sixes. Yeah, Then right, right there after it warmed up a little bit, it was like it 670. Well, and that's the thing, when it warmed up, it actually uh, shifted into gear all right without us doing anything. So it just doesn't like, like that few 50 RPM, it likes them. But I shouldn't be doing that anyway. I should warm the engine up before I start shifting it. Yeah. Contact. Okay. Yeah, Jake has stopped back by again. Howdy. And we have completed another job. That's the bigger motor on there. And that is significantly slower. Wow. Like, really, really slower. But, but that should have all the torque we need to lift the anchor. All right, we are plumb bobbing our depth here. Confirming that it's like everywhere else. Well, that's a little more than 10 feet. So we got 10 feet of water here. Thank you very much, sir. So we got seven foot of draft. We're gonna call it seven foot, even though we're not. But we calibrate the depth sounder to three feet down. Yeah, to tell us that we're in three feet of water now. We're good. There's two schools of thought. You can calibrate from the surface down to uh, the bottom. That's one way of doing it. If you're in a boat, it's gonna change a lot. Tugboats do that because they take on a lot of fuel. They sit a lot lower in the water. We don't actually change that much and I just give us a little extra and we're good. Did you, are you photobombing? <laughs> All right, so minus two and a half feet is the distance. That, that's how far the transducer is above the keels. So that's Correct. right. Yeah, that makes sense. So we set it down here, which yeah. then changed the depth of the system. Everywhere. Everywhere. So we have it on the alarm. We have it Sweet. here so, and here. And yeah. we should have it. Now I need an alarm set for like, uh, I'm in, I got three feet under the keel now. I want the alarm to go off when I have five feet under the keel. Okay. Shallow depth alarm? Yeah, shallow depth alarm. Cool. Excellent. What's Ooh. this? Just a big wall of... This is a wall of departed crew. This is Super Dave's plaque. Do you want some help holding it or something? Yeah, would you put your finger over there? Yeah, absolutely. Super Dave, Tommy how to cast metal, help me weld the two halves of the boat together one day. Hell of a guy. This house was full of CNC machines and mills and lathes and guns and... He had little pathways through the house to get from one place to the other, and coffee makers. He roasted coffee. Sounds like a good thing. <laughs> he made his own roasters. Well, 
Well, if you have that many CNC machines, you pretty much make everything. He built my uh, my burner for my furnace. So, Jake, we don't want you on this wall very soon. Do my best. So here's to Super Dave. Okay, this is another li weird little job. This pump back here in that well has a proximity switch on it. In other words, it's not a float switch. It actually has electronic gizmo that measures the distance to the water, but pumps and then it shuts down. It pumps again, it shuts down like it's doing now. And it pumps it through a check valve, so it's not getting fed back in there. It's just what comes back off the impeller. It doesn't do it every time. No, it doesn't. There, it's on. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it normally does. A little one and then a big one, and then it just keeps on doing that. Except now. Maybe it's just taking Maybe it out it clean. Like Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, I'm not giving a big hurrah to proximity switches. I also have a problem with the one up front again. This one has a float switch in it. And its problem is it's not getting bounced enough. Maybe under sail it would be fine. But you jiggle it, it works. Pumps the water down, turns itself off, and behaves itself. But you gotta kick it. <gasps> Do what? Get a stick and poke it through the crack. That's that's your engineering solution. Okay, it would work. Yeah, okay, there it comes. Yeah, that looks clean. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Oh, hell. See, it had a ridge on it last time. I polished it down, sanded it up, and it worked for a little while. Hmm. But now, I don't know. So the float switch pump doesn't like turning on, and the proximity switch pump doesn't like turning off. So I have the worst of both worlds. Why just get like a regular old pump and then run a switch to it then and then make people use it whenever they take a shower. Yeah, that's what it's like. I've seen that on boats. So both of those are Harbor Freight pumps. So as you could say, it's something we should expect. So if you've got a recommendation for a pump that uh, the float switch actually works, let me know. Venture Touring Bike. Venture Touring. So cute for something that can remove a tow. We're gonna have to relocate him. This is a dangerous place. Bird will find him. Say hello to YouTube. Say hello to YouTube. I, I will grow up big and bite your fingers off. Act like a rock. There's birds around. See, my problem with this bike is it's way too big for my stubby little legs. But it is a Yamaha. You stand on the foot peg to get on it. Look, I got I got tippy toe on this, and I'm three inches off the ground on the other side. I show off. Oh, you just balance on it. Well, I'm not gonna do that on a bike that ain't mine. First thing I want to do is drop your bike. Oh, you got the uh, guards and everything. This is nice. My buddy decided to take a swim. Good luck to you, buddy. If this works, that's interesting, but I think that might work. We need something to pull the big rope through the clutches. These here are the clutches. The rope's got to go through it. We think it won't be a problem once this stuff gets stretched because it's just brand new and bulky right now. What do you call that? Milking the cover over the cable. All right, that might pull it through. I think it might. All right. Let's give it a try. Oh, look at that. Well done, sir. So in a fully open position, it looks like that's as high as it goes. But if oh. you actually shove something bigger in there, it will retract a little bit oh, more. It's got a spring in it, so that's what you're That's where they're, yeah, so. And then and it does go close it and down and you will ways. not get that back. Yeah. Pulling the core out. Yeah, it is. That's a hell of a nice attachment. <laughs> All right. Everything I thought bad about you, I'll take back a little bit of it. So they tell you you can lock this down and still pull the line through. And you can. can. Yeah, that you did is it so earlier. cool. Just by hand. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So that means we can take up. You can leave it locked. Yeah, we can take up slack while it's locked. Yeah. All right. Well, that's why I paid so stinking much for these things. It's sliding that way. That's probably. I should have my leg on the other side of it. Tell me you did a good job. Our buzzard's over there where we put the turtle in. He's distracted by the gar. Okay, it was insanely windy out today, but I had Alex and Dustin here, so I had my crew down on the boat. And this job really requires somebody down there to tie things on and hoist things up to you. But we got the forward masthead all assembled, and it was a nice thing to get done. So next is the main one, but uh, you know, I gotta say something about this activity. I just love it because there's that little bit of fear that you're feeling while you're up there and I think we all need a little bit more of that in our lives. 
then Dustin got back there and he's working on the uh, the new bridle for the boat and we put some pelican hooks in these things are marvelous so for a rapid uh, launch and recovery of this boat uh, pelican hook us to the way you can squeeze them and while you have load they stay hooked but you take that load off they open up quickly and they're very quick to put back on and cinch back up and it's the main mast that is going on tomorrow. Well, Alexandria got out there and figured out how to, to, to pair that with the uh, the system. So all of that comes down wireless from the top of the masthead, which is great because a lightning strike was less reason to come into the boat. All right, the main mast away. So I thought, oh, I'll get up today and uh, go up there and rig the main mast. Even if it wasn't raining, there is no way. I'm just way too sore. I need to get in shape and lose some weight. Maybe being on a boat will help. Well, it's been a rainy day, but even a rainy day can be pretty. Look at that sunset. Yeah, it's laundry day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I, I took a sailing class from a lady. She had a yacht. And uh, I made the mistake of washing my clothes in the sink up in the bathroom and then hanging them up on the rails to dry. And she was just mortified that we did that because we were at a guest yacht club and, now what would the other yachts think? <laughs> I decided back then that ain't gonna be my boat. So I will dry my skivvies and my socks in the sun and in the fresh air and not worry about what people think. Yeah, I don't use a bosun seat. I just use a regular climbing seat because I'm more familiar with them. And the bosun seats nowadays pretty much are a climbing seat with a bench. They would be more comfortable for a long time, but if I get this thing right on me, I can stand it. Now, I used to rock climb, and I didn't use these fancy things. These are really nice. This is a cinch. It's also a grigri, and this is a rolling lock. I put this down below and this up above. This one. It's nice if you have the line loose going down from you, but sometimes you can't do that. You'll have to have it tied in because the boat's swaying too much, and you don't want to you don't want to pendle them with the uh, top of the mast. But if you can uh, have a nice day like today, I think I'll use this because then I can pull the rope up and I can move this up really easily. Otherwise, I gotta have my hand down. I gotta push it up. It works well like that too, but something to consider. The old man climbing goes at the top. Hand goes at the bottom. You know, once you put this thing on, you either got it right or wrong. The handle is a little bit of a trick. Let me show you that. So here's what I mean. When I step in my foot loops, I can pull this line up and just slide my hand down it. So it's easy to go up with this piece. And now I have all my weight on it. The handle works like this. It's just a little bit of a leverage for you and it lets you come down under your control. If you let go of it, you stop. The leg loops are just two loops for your legs and one to tie in to your rolling lock. So the rolling lock just pulls open and you can see it's got teeth in there and those are gonna grab the line. You put it over the line, lock it back together and you can see those teeth will bite in when I pull down this side. But when I go up, it's very easy to move this thing up the line. And that makes climbing much easier. This is the same kind of thing. It's called a rope man. See it parts open, put the line in there and you can see it's got a massive set of teeth. Think about everything I'm gonna need going to come back down. Brandon will be here after a while. much nicer day to be up on the mast. The wind is not blowing much. And look at there. We got some scenery coming down the river. And this one is the one I was using before. The other one has a roller on it, which is nice in some cases, but it wasn't biting every time. I had to, you know, wait a little, little bit to get it to bite in. That was a pain. So I like this one better. So the first job up here is to uh, put some webbing around, tie it as high as I can on the pipe, and then uh, take my line, connect it to uh, nothing really and take these bolts out so I can get this plate off the top. That's what we lifted it by to get it into the boat. Hoist. So once the lift plate is off, the next job is to bring up a jib crane basically that will attach to the mast itself with some ratchet straps 
and that will help us when we bring up the next section which is actually an extension to the mast because our mast uh, I wanted to be low enough that I could be sure to get it underneath the bridges even if we we're at flood state we'll probably be able to leave it up there but not really sure for Artco all of our lower boats have all got switched over to electric throttles yeah so when you go from you know in gear to knocking it out of gear yeah with an air throttle when I do that you hear because it's releasing the air right electric doesn't do that well over at Ingram they actually programmed in to where these throttles make that noise because the pilots are so accustomed to hearing that noise, they couldn't tell that they were out of gear right? because they never heard the have lost dogs. Yeah, see? Well, I didn't get done nearly as much as I wanted to, but you know, it is what it is. The worst thing you can probably do is be up there and be tired and stressed and trying to get it done and in a hurry and you make mistakes. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go sailing with Charlie. So we'll see you all later. So until next time, I hope you go out and do something that scares you a little bit. Fly a plane solo across the Atlantic, ride a motorcycle, climb a mast, do something. Makes life much more enjoyable. And send us your photos. What'd you make today? It happens. Um, you know, Look at that. Isn't that cute? No, not there. these guys. Mom and Dad had the kids out for a little swim and stroll today. Uh -huh.